All right, so a little caveat here. Um, whenever you're filling out your information, um, you know, right here, we already started doing it. Let me show you what you do when you do the uh, key on engine running startup. Obviously, there's only one, two, three, four, five, six, seven pids, right? So what you're gonna do is you're gonna go to your startup and after you go to your startup, you're actually going to click on this button right here. And it... So, little caveat here. Um, we started recording this stuff. Uh, all of these we recorded and then we got down here to the startup uh, recording. And I wanted to show you uh, the little different thing that we do here. So this is my startup. You can tell mainly by the battery uh, dropping down right there. Uh, but you don't want to like print screen this and put this over on the uh, WordPad document um, with all of these PIDs on there. What you want to do is you want to go in here and you want to take off all the PIDs that are not labeled. On this sheet of paper right here so every single one of those uh, sections you need two print screens on this one right here you need a print screen at the top print screen at the bottom on the startup you need to have a print screen of basically the lowest battery voltage and or the lowest FICOM voltage usually they're simultaneous they're usually in the same spot but don't be fooled sometimes FICOM drops after you start it you want the lowest FICOM it even says it right here okay after that you want to get the generally the highest of where the, the ICP, the voltage, the IPR, wherever the highest is of that. I, I don't need to have it like, you know, the highest of each individual one. Just find a line in the middle that basically shows what we're talking about, um, you know, as being a good average. If something randomly spikes, we need to document that. But for most of the time, you're basically gonna have two print screens for this one and basically the battery with the FICOM is gonna be the lowest and then you're gonna have one that's the highest for those and I'll show you that momentarily. So now obviously we've only got one page here. We don't need to have multiple screenshots of multiple pages. This is how, the, the, these are all those ICP uh, PIDs that I was talking about a minute ago. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get us into the general area here. See how there's a couple low spots right there? We're just gonna move over to a low spot. Looks like it's 10.12. EGR duty cycle was zero and FICOM was 47. Notice the FICOM actually goes down one. Actually, it's even lower over here. Look at this, 44, 42. So this actually just so happens to be a situation where the battery is not the lowest uh, simultaneous as the FICOM. The FICOM is actually lower at some other time. I'm glad that we caught this because you actually need three print screens for this particular truck. So I'm gonna print screen the lowest one right there and I'm gonna write it in. This is gonna be 42 volts. By the way, we also noticed that FICOM voltage was low on the key on engine off. So what I'm gonna do is whenever the numbers don't match what they're supposed to be, I usually highlight them. And typically anything that's related to one another I highlight the same color, like battery voltage, FICOM voltage, stuff like that. Okay, so I've got one of those already print screen. I'm gonna go to the bottom, paste that in there. I'm gonna move this cursor over, come back over here to the low for the battery. Looks like we got a 10.12. So I'll paste that in there. I'll go back up here, I'll write this in. So we're gonna be doing three print screens for this one. Normally it's just two. We already did two print screens for this one, uh, but it's the same idea. You're just gonna do the top half and then you're gonna scroll to the bottom half, print screen it. You just gotta make sure that's in there because sometimes you'll accidentally write the wrong number in here or sometimes I actually wanna go back and look at the graph because this right here is an example of uh, ICP ramping up and building properly, but sometimes this will be drug out over like three or four or five seconds and we don't want to see that so even though it might have hit the number that it needed to hit it might have taken way too long and the graph will show me so that's why we need a print screen of the graph and we also just record it that way we can just send it to the customer so here i'm going to move this over here i'm going to pick a line right in the middle back it up just a hair see how like you know it might be a little bit higher to the left there it might be a little tiny bit higher to the left there this might be a little bit higher to the left there but overall that's like a good general high average for those numbers. 
And what I'm gonna do is uh, I'll print screen that, I'll go over to my word pad and I'll record these numbers. ICP needs to be more than 500. Yeah. All right, so we got 25, 23 for ICP. That's a good number. Voltage should correspond with that. Uh, in this case, it's 2.84. IPR is supposed to be over 30, and in this case, it's 56. EGR valve position. Uh, usually, I pull up the percentage, uh, but either the percentage or the valve position it doesn't matter. Zero percent. Usually, if there's an issue there, we'll see it with the percentage, and or we can go pull up the uh, valve voltage in the event that the truck's not deleted. This particular truck's deleted. Uh, also, the truck started, so I'm actually just gonna say yes and yes for both of those. In the event that the truck did not start, we would need to record that information. And we, because if a truck's not getting Fickham sync or it's not getting regular sync, that can tell you what's actually wrong with the truck. So now that we've done all of this, um, where the truck's idled now, the truck's you know maybe up to 150 degrees or so, um, we already did the coal power balance. You already saw that, so I'm gonna hit. I'm gonna say that's passed. While the truck's still warming up, I'm gonna test the fan clutch and do the glow plug monitoring test. The glow plug monitoring test is extremely easy to do. Self test, powertrain, engine, and then go to glow plug self test. Just hit enter. The the truck might idle a little funny for like a split second, but that's nothing to be worried about. Go ahead and pause it. Yeah. All right. So glow plug uh, monitoring test passed. So I'm gonna print screen that. I'm gonna go ahead and put that at the very bottom right here. Once I have that at the bottom, I'm gonna go back to the top and I'm going to say that it passed. Okay, uh, I'm gonna be testing a fan clutch, so I'm gonna be on the other program for a while. So I'm gonna save this while I go over here to this other program because I want that working in the background. So I'm gonna exit out of that. As usual, you don't wanna have more than one or two things open at the top here, okay? Toolbox. Uh, then we're gonna go to data logger, which is actually the same thing as this, and we're gonna choose different pits. We're gonna go to the bottom black box, and we're gonna go to six liter VGT. Now, you can raise the RPMs right here, but I normally just rev the truck up. Hold on, I chose the wrong. I chose the wrong PID list, hang on one second. I did VGT, which is still, fuck it, I'm gonna show you how to do it right now. RPMs, you do wanna raise the RPMs up. Once you raise the RPMs all the way up, click on varying VGT, click on the little button over here to where you take control of it, and you click plus, which should open it. When you open it, exhaust back pressure gauge should be less than one PSI. In this case, it's at .39, that's fine. MAP should basically be, you know, whatever uh, barometric pressure is. I don't have barometric pressure up, but you already wrote it down in a previous uh, window. Basically, MGP should be zero. As soon as I close VGT, back pressure should go above 10 PSI, and MGP usually goes a little bit above two. And you should hear an audible difference out of the tailpipe. So, EPPG is supposed to go over 10. In this case, it's hitting 16, which is actually a little higher than normal. And MGP is hitting 3.9, which is slightly higher than normal. Normal is like 2.5, 3, 3.5, something like that. So this tells me that the turbo is responding to the computer inputs properly. That is the VGT test. Now the reason we can't let the computer do its own VGT test and we have to do it manually like this is because this EGR is deleted and if you do the turbo test that the computer tells you to do, let me see if I can find it real quick, powertrain, fuel, no, mm, air management, there it is, turbocharger test. When you do that test, it actually reads EGR PIDs. You can't read EGR PIDs when the EGR is deleted and everything's unplugged. So back to this data logger. Let's pull up the correct data logger. And before we do that, undo the control that you took over top of the RPM. Always remember to do that. Open up six liter. Let's see here, what are we doing? Um, fan, right? Right there. Okay, so you can idle up to 1200 or normally I just rub it up to 2000 with my foot just because it's faster. Hit the pound, hit the button. Bring up the fan variance all the way to 100%. If you have the truck at 2,000 RPMs, this fan signal speed should respond within 15 to 20 seconds. 
The truck is idling at 2,000 RPMs. This thing should idle, be, uh, the fan signal speed should be between 1,700 and 2,300 uh, once it fully engages. You should also be able to hear it, okay? So let me bring the RPM up to 2,000. This is still climbing, it's at about 1,500 right now. Print screen this, this is gonna be a pass. I can also hear the fan. Can you hear the fan? Yep. Okay. So I'm gonna do pass. Go to the bottom, paste it in there. Remember, it saved while we were doing that. So we weren't like waiting around, waiting on it to save. The last thing I do is I, I check transmission fluid level. Once I do that, I go do my wide open throttle because the truck's now up to temp. Here we got uh, you know, 174, 179. And um, you know, since we're, wide we're gonna do our wide open throttle, we normally do three or four of those uh, before we even make it to Valhalla. Usually then I just drive like Miss Daisy all the way back from there and then I get my key on operating numbers when I get back and then uh, Literally, I'll just look at whatever the codes are that came back after I drove if there's anything new I'll record them and then um, You know, we'll go on to uh, that. That's like a more further in-depth diag That's not really something that I'm having you go after but basically you could fill this stuff out You know just like this and you could do it very rapidly things to look for coolant pressure wide open throttle uh, fuel pressure, wide open throttle. You're gonna have your gauges up on your dash. Um, you want to know what those two are, and that's what I like to. That's why I like to do more than one wide open throttle because one wide open throttle sometimes won't show as anything wrong in the coolant. Uh, more than one wide open throttle, maybe you'll forget to look at the fuel pressure. You've always got to remember to look at that. Also, whenever you go to do your recordings, okay, always make sure your timer is switched over to the 15. Uh, slash zero okay uh, that way when you're going to drive down the road and you go wide open throttle you're not sitting there trying to mess around with anything you just reach over hit anything in the middle here anything in the middle and then you can hit the space bar you'll actually watch this right here click black okay so if you don't click anything in the middle the space bar is not gonna do a recording for you so that's a key piece of information that everybody always forgets changing the timer hitting anything in the middle, then hitting the space bar after wide open throttle. And then, it's just the same thing. Record your wide open throttle numbers, record your operating temps when you get, you know, when you get back, and then after you do all of that, make sure that you print screen everything and you put everything in the uh, WordPad document at the bottom. At the Okay, good. Um, so basically, what you're going to do is you're going to have two print screens of this, two print screens of that. You just make sure that it's on here because once you exit out of your IDS, it's going for good. But you gotta make sure that it's in here and it'll be saved under the guy's name, we'll be able to go back to it and all that good stuff. So that's pretty much it.